In the annals of history, there stands a man who defied the odds, a relentless visionary who carved his path to power through blood and brilliance. From humble beginnings on the windswept island of Corsica to ascending the throne as Emperor of France, Napoleon Bonaparte's life was a mesmerizing odyssey of ambition, intrigue and mystery. However, behind the scenes, Napoleon held a secret that could shake the very foundations of his legacy. What was the secret? A man of great conquests, yet equally driven by a tumultuous personal life. Few knew of his affairs, his unyielding desire for power, and the shadows that haunted him in the dead of night. What demons lurk behind this facade of invincibility? Well, take a trip with me as we unveil one of history's enigmatic leaders, Napoleon Bonaparte. On August 15, 1769, Napoleon Bonaparte was born on the island of Corsica, which was then part of the Genoese Republic. At the time, Corsica's history was rife with conflicts, and it was a region that had been conquered and reconquered by various powers. Napoleon's family belonged to the lesser Corsican nobility, and his father, Carlo Bonaparte, held some influence as a lawyer and political activist. His mother, Letizia Romolino, came from a family of modest means but had a strong personality that would later influence her famous son. From early on, Napoleon displayed brilliance and determination, traits that would pave the way for his meteoric rise. He received his early education at a local school in Corsica, where he expressed a keen interest in geography and history. However, he left Corsica for mainland France in 1779, aged nine, to attend school in Outon. At the Royal Military School in Brienne-le-Chateau, young Napoleon faced challenges due to his Corsican accent, smaller stature, and relatively modest background compared to the other students. Despite these obstacles, he applied himself diligently to his studies, excelling in mathematics, geography, and history. Napoleon also developed a love for reading, devouring the works of classical authors and Enlightenment philosophers, which significantly shaped his thinking and worldview. In 1784, at the age of 15, Napoleon received a scholarship to attend the prestigious École Militaire in Paris. This marked the beginning of his military career, where he would eventually become a second lieutenant in the artillery regiment. Napoleon's time in Paris exposed him to the intellectual and political ferment of the French capital, and he continued to expand his knowledge by attending lectures, debates, and literary gatherings. Napoleon Bonaparte's rise to power began during the turbulent years of the French Revolution which erupted in 1789. As a young and ambitious military officer, Napoleon seized the opportunities presented by the revolutionary turmoil, demonstrating his leadership abilities and strategic acumen, ultimately propelling him to the forefront of French politics and military command. In the early years of the revolution, Napoleon's military career flourished. He fervently embraced the revolutionary ideals of liberty and equality, which resonated with the sentiments of many soldiers and citizens alike. His loyalty to the revolutionary cause and his successful suppression of counter-revolutionary uprisings earned him recognition and rapid promotions within the French army. In 1793, during the Reign of Terror, Napoleon was assigned to command the artillery of the French forces besieging the town of Toulon, which was occupied by British and counter-revolutionary forces. His innovative strategies and decisive actions played a pivotal role in recapturing Toulon for the French Republic, earning him the rank of Brigadier General at the age of 24. In 1796, the Directory, the executive body of the French government at the time, appointed Napoleon as the commander of the French Army of Italy. This appointment marked a turning point in Napoleon's career as he was given considerable autonomy and authority to lead the campaign. During the Italian campaign, Napoleon displayed exceptional military brilliance. He employed rapid and aggressive maneuvers, making use of his army's mobility and superior tactics to defeat larger, more cumbersome enemy forces. His series of brilliant victories against the Austrian and Sardinian armies in Italy not only expanded French territory, but also earned him widespread acclaim and admiration. Napoleon's successful campaign in Italy boosted his popularity among the French people and the military, solidifying his reputation as a military genius and a rising star in French politics. Emboldened by his success in Italy, Napoleon set his sights on expanding French influence beyond Europe. In 1798, he launched the ambitious Egyptian campaign to disrupt British trade routes to India and establish a French presence in the Middle East. 
Though the Egyptian campaign initially encountered some successes, it ultimately turned into a military and strategic quagmire. Napoleon's failure to decisively defeat the British and the abandonment of his troops in Egypt to return to France marked a temporary setback to his career. Back in France, the political situation had grown increasingly unstable. The Directory was facing mounting challenges and internal divisions, and many in France were disillusioned with the failures and corruption of the revolutionary government. Recognizing the discontent and the opportunity for change, Napoleon, along with other influential politicians, orchestrated the coup of 18 Brumaire, November 9, 1799. The coup effectively dissolved the Directory, and a new three-man governing body, known as the Consulate, was established with Napoleon as its first consul, effectively holding the most power. With the establishment of the consulate, Napoleon became the de facto ruler of France, holding immense authority and wielding significant influence over the government and the military. He worked to stabilize the government, introducing domestic reforms and presenting himself as a unifying figure, promising to restore order and bring an end to the chaos of the French Revolution. His success in these areas earned him significant popularity and support among the French people. Napoleon was keenly aware of the importance of public support and legitimacy. He organized two plebiscites in 1800 and 1808, which were essentially referendums in which the French people voted on specific issues or decisions. In the plebiscites, the public expressed their overwhelming approval of Napoleon's leadership, granting him the titles of Life Consul in 1802 and later Emperor. Before proceeding, be sure to leave a like for the algorithm and subscribe to our channel clicking the bell. This will encourage us to do better and you'll never miss any of our weekly videos. On December 2nd, 1804, Napoleon's ambitions reached their pinnacle when he was officially crowned Emperor of the French in a grand ceremony at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. The coronation was a carefully orchestrated event that combined the symbolic trappings of the traditional monarchy with revolutionary imagery. During the ceremony, Pope Pius VII anointed Napoleon, further legitimizing his imperial title. Following his rise to emperor, Napoleon Bonaparte entered a phase of his rule known as the First French Empire. This period was marked by extensive military campaigns, territorial expansion, administrative reforms, and attempts to reshape Europe under his hegemony. The years of 1804 and 1812 marked the pinnacle of his power and military genius. Napoleon's military ambitions knew no bounds, and he launched a series of military campaigns to expand the French Empire and establish French dominance over Europe. One of his most significant victories during this period was the decisive Battle of Auslitz in 1805, where he defeated a combined Austro-Russian force, further solidifying his reputation as a military genius. He also defeated Prussian forces at the Battle of Jena and Auerstedt in 1806, leading to the dissolution of the Holy Roman Empire. In an attempt to weaken Great Britain economically and politically, Napoleon implemented the Continental System in 1806, this policy aimed to isolate Britain by closing European ports to British goods, effectively creating an economic blockade. However, this policy backfired as it led to economic hardships for European countries and triggered resentment against French dominance. By 1812, Napoleon had established the first French Empire and had effectively defeated most of his European adversaries. However, his continental system, which aimed to economically isolate Britain by closing European ports to British goods, encountered difficulties and resistance from various countries. Russia, led by Tsar Alexander I, was a key player in this resistance and had reopened trade with Britain, undermining the effectiveness of the continental system. Furthermore, Napoleon's reputation as a military genius and invincible leader suffered some setbacks. He believed that a decisive victory over Russia would solidify his dominance in Europe and force Tsar Alexander I to submit to his authority and continental system. In June 1812, Napoleon assembled the Grande Armée, one of the largest and most powerful military forces in history, consisting of nearly 600,000 soldiers from various nations under French command. The massive army began its march into Russian territory in June, launching the invasion that would go down in history as one of the most audacious military campaigns ever undertaken. The Russian military adopted a strategy of avoiding confrontations with the advancing Grande Armée, 
employing a scorched earth policy to deny the French army access to vital supplies and provisions. This tactic involved retreating deep into Russia, burning crops and destroying infrastructure along the way to leave the invading forces starving and weakened. The French and Russian forces clashed in the Battle of Borodino on September 7, 1812. This was the largest and bloodiest single-day battle of the Napoleonic Wars, resulting in tens of thousands of casualties on both sides. The French emerged as the nominal victors, but the battle did not deliver the decisive blow Napoleon had hoped for. The Russian army withdrew further, and the road to Moscow was open. Despite their victory at Borodino, the French forces entered a deserted and burning Moscow on September 14, 1812. The Russians had employed a scorched earth strategy, leaving the city in ruins with no supplies for the invaders. Napoleon had anticipated that capturing Moscow would force the Russians to sue for peace, but the city's destruction and lack of provisions left the French army in a dire predicament. As winter approached, Napoleon faced a devastating reality. The Russian winter was far harsher than expected, and his army was ill-prepared for the bitter cold. With dwindling supplies, the Granda army began a perilous retreat from Moscow in October 1812. The Russian forces launched attacks on the retreating French army, further adding to their losses. By the time the remnants of the Granda army crossed back into friendly territory, it had been reduced to a fraction of its original size. The failure of the Russian campaign was a devastating blow to Napoleon's reputation and military power. The losses incurred during the invasion significantly weakened the French Empire and emboldened European powers to form the Sixth Coalition against France. After the failed invasion of Russia in 1812, European powers saw an opportunity to challenge Napoleon's dominance. The Sixth Coalition, which included Austria, Prussia, Russia, Great Britain, Portugal, Spain and Sweden, was formed against France in 1813. The coalition's main objective was to defeat Napoleon and restore the balance of power in Europe. In October 1813, the decisive Battle of Leipzig took place. Known as the Battle of Nations, it was one of the largest and bloodiest battles of the Napoleonic War. The coalition forces decisively defeated Napoleon's army, forcing him to retreat to France. The Battle of Leipzig marked a significant turning point, weakening Napoleon's military power and severely denting his image of invincibility. Faced with mounting pressure from the coalition forces, a series of military defeats, and the threat of invasion in France, Napoleon abdicated as emperor on April 6, 1814. He was allowed to retain the title of emperor, but was exiled to the island of Elba in the Mediterranean, where he lived as a virtual prisoner under the watch of the British. In a dramatic turn of events, Napoleon managed to escape from Elba and return to France on March 1, 1815, beginning what became known as the Hundred Days. This period saw his short-lived resurgence to power as he sought to rally his supporters and re-establish his rule. Napoleon's return to power was met with resistance from the Seventh Coalition, led by the Duke of Wellington and Prussian Field Marshal Blücher. On June 18, 1815, the Battle of Waterloo in Belgium took place. Despite a valiant effort by Napoleon, the coalition forces emerged victorious, dealing a crushing blow to his forces. This defeat led to his second abdication on June 22, 1815. After his second abdication, Napoleon was exiled again, but this time to the remote island of St. Helena in the South Atlantic Ocean. The British government, concerned about the possibility of further escapes, closed this isolated location to ensure Napoleon's captivity. Napoleon spent his remaining years in St. Helena, reflecting on his life and dictating his memoirs to his loyal companions. His health gradually declined, and he died on May 5, 1821, at the age of 51. The official cause of death was listed as stomach cancer, but some historians believe he may have been poisoned. The epic rise and fall of French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte remains a timeless tale of ambition, courage, and the thirst for power. From the small island of Corsica to the grand stages of Europe, his journey serves as a reminder that even the most extraordinary figures can be shaped by their ambitions and hubris. Despite his defeat, Napoleon's legacy as a transformative figure in history continues to captivate and intrigue generations to come.